us here and with those who are joining us online, various locations around the world. We pray, O God, that this discussion will help us to carry forward the mission into which you have called us. That is, the salt and light of the world. To live in your name. Pray, Jesus. Amen. So, without much uh, further, I want to invite our panelists. Yeah, I think all of them have already been introduced one way or another. So we'll invite the Reverend Professor Philippi, the Dean of Accredited Studies, Associate Professor of African Theology here at the Institute, the Laureate of the University of this program, Mr. Representative Church of Ghana, Master Joseph Cheney, who is also head of our blog. Uh, I think we can use this microphone, we just have to share it. But I want to start by asking each one of you to just share maybe, we'll, we'll be here for an hour, we'll not today, but to share your first thoughts or reflections out of the conversations that we've had so far. As we consider the question, where do we go from here? Where do we go from? How do we carry forward the conversation? I'll just give you a few minutes to respond to that question in light of your initial reflections of the conversation. So we'll start from here. Joseph, we are we are being Doing cultural traditions, so we have to go on. Yes, yes, we'll start this way. You see, I'm going away, I'm standing in confused. So we'll start with our mother. What does he do? And I'm grateful for your And everything has to be But moving forward, you see, getting a wider. I 
there's a new one that's been on the road for more than 14 years. So it's been, uh, this is the church, it's an old But I, I've been telling you that I think that beyond the Sunday uh, uh, cultural celebration, and these days, those churches are not made. Oh, uh, it's our day, so they wear their Kenyan dresses and then they come and dance and all that. There should be some education. So maybe a week of teaching, of engagement, where there is serious engagement with why we go with it. Why do we wear the kind of dress we Why do we have to use the drum and use it in this way? So I think we should identify the church or churches as part of the areas where we can actually uh, follow up, some kind of a follow up of this. And then identify one of the modes of the special that we can use. It is drama, who do we get in this of the city or or, you know, work with them. And once we get it going, let's say in one church situation, and other seeds, you know, Daniels, you know, we like what it's doing. Oh, this church is it's going very well. You know, we can use the culture. So that would be my initial response uh, uh, that we can to the very practical way, the practical way in which this going. <laughs> My first thoughts are that it's interesting that we notice that artists or art is good for communication, and yet artists are not communicating the need for the arts through their heart. And so I would say art is the key solving this problem. We can, uh, I think the woman was talking about the uh, peer advert jingle that stuck in his mind. So, a, a song that advocates the arts can be used to spread the message. So, I think that we already have the tools to be able to move this message down here, except that we're, we're not thinking about using them. And so, if we're going to start using the arts to spread the message, I think we'll have uh, made a first step. And then, I was during the updating transition session, we spoke about the impact of social media. And I think that it's one tool that we need to use. It's supported that we struggle a bit with the internet for this. But there are 30 people in this room, but over 180 listening across the world. And so if we could amplify that, we don't need everybody in one room. COVID has already taught us by force that we can reach more. So I think that harnessing social media and the internet is major in getting this message down, downstream. And then, um, as uh, Dr. Sarah was performing, I work with a children's ministry called Awana. We travel around the nation, we train children's ministry workers, Sunday school teachers. One of the, the programs we train them with is called Living God's Story. And the concept is how we get the Sunday school teachers to tell the Bible stories in a lively manner. Okay. Now, as I watched her tell the stories, I realized that we are going about it the wrong way. <laughs> because there's an African way of telling the story that would resonate more with our people. So I went to see her and I said, I really need you to come and teach us how to teach, how to tell stories. And I think that. Organizations like that can be harnessed to train Sunday school teachers to actually adopt the arts. We might be facing resistance in the main service, but I think children ministry workers are happy to experiment with what we have. And so that is one, one key. And once we're reaching the children, 
we are actually transforming the generation. So the, the tradition will update itself because <laughs> we already hit them at the bottom. The system will become systematized. That's good. I think you've all begun to do some similar things. And then uh, we're changing the practical steps forward. One, I want to pick up on what Dr. Stephen said around the, and Dr. Fly as well, the issue of the, the metal block, the, if I can use the term fear, that often confronts theologians. Church people, even artists, when it comes to engaging our tradition, how can we are more or less academic people here? Some practitioners have come. Practically speaking, how do we help those who come to us? Whether the context of the religious sector, the context of the country, or whatever institution we are in. How do we concretely begin to help that process of decolonization as it relates to the to our culture and the arts? And we've done a lot of language in the country, we've done some of broader control for some of the concrete, you know, things. Uh, dance and so on. It's one of the reasons I'm so grateful that we have people from different disciplines here to talk to. You. Uh, so, so when, what do we do to do that process of decolonization? Uh, because this, this, this is not the, the people who come to us are churches, isn't it? <laughs> you need students to come to the department that are from churches. We pastors who are leading churches. Um, so, what do we do to spare that process of decolonization? What can CMAX do? What can we do as institutions to help that side of the, of the equation? So, anyone can respond. So, my, my first thought was that we really need uh, either an MA or easier to start with is a certificate program that people like Joe Metal can. To, and there are, there are lots of his followers who are looking for something that will stimulate them. And so, a certificate program in the arts, interdisciplinary, I think it's a, it's a, it's a place to start. We can develop into an MA that you know brings these disciplines together and you know starts the conversation. I think that that is you know, one way to go. Um, it's interesting to say um, organizing the program in the top one of the things that I'm doing that is setting, and this is the need for artists to engage a bit more in the field. What about that means? Um, because yesterday, listening to Professor um, Pierre talking about um, expanding on an art 17 art stage and giving us some background to why it was that there was an unknown board in Athens. For me, it was a real archive opener. And sometimes it's because we do not know. Uh, a lot of knowledge by the program, I guess. I mean, we do not know. I mean, so we walk in darkness. So a lot of a better way of expressing it. So I'm thinking and thinking if I have the ability you can actually take an MA course in theology. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, it's just a false. Because I just said a greater engagement with thought, I mean, a greater engagement with theology. I don't know how to put it. For me, as an artist, as a person in the performing arts, um, Quite useful. I mean, because it is interesting that through Christian mission, my traditions somehow seem to have been suppressed as I, I discover from the theater mission reports. 
but it's through Christian mission that I'm discovering. It's through Christian, it's through the Bible, it's through an engagement with the knowledge of our God that I'm discovering that my traditions are like, there's a little uh, 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 irony there. You know, but that is the truth. I mean, get to know God and see how He sees me makes me more comfortable with who I am. If that makes sense. And therefore, a greater engagement with God, a greater engagement with theology, will help us erase that negative thoughts that somehow I'm a bit inferior because I was born in a white person in a Western society. But God affirms me that. I put you here for a purpose. So it's coming to this cycle. I don't know. But he said yes. I thought so you're talking about concrete ways, I guess I engage and what does the Bible say about my own? What does the Bible say about my tradition? That affects who I am. Your comments is a reminiscent of what Professor Bonnie Diapo said in becoming a Christian. He found that he was becoming more of an African. So it, it really echoes that same sentiments, the characteristical nature of the same Christian missions that separate the culture. God now affirming aspects of that same culture. So, Prof. Lang, you want to weigh in on this? I, I cannot agree more with what my son said. So he came around. I think he did the thing. Like what Cassidia said, we need to engage people to reflect theologically on what's the important. Because the religion of them is Christians, but they do not think. That this is a space which can be impacted by Christian gospel. You know, let's to, to raise the issues. They think also this can also be that uh, already they are beginning to think about these things, but they need to assist them the tools, like uh, as I did said, to be able to do more. But you know, with our scientific programs, I think it's open to to those who are blind. So the um, uh, number of students that we actually get to the think about teaching more people. And uh, so that's why I think the yes, yes, that is to, to for us to work with the church. That's it. To work with the church. The church has large following, one very big influential church. Then start to understand these things, to engage the leadership. And then it's the kind of thing that we learn these two days. Assuming that you get to that church, uh, where you have free uh, it, it's being advertised of, so they come. I think it's very exciting you know, a church. And then you have to engage them and say, how about getting these things done? Let's see those who have these. Mental brocades, okay, so things that I think. Let's think open it up. I mean, I believe that, of course, for many of us who are coming here, we almost can say we are I mean, beginning to appreciate what is happening. There are people who give you reasons why we still cannot work. Uh, so, so I believe that, yes, the certificate program is good for starters, but we need to engage. Um, a larger community. And I think that this can probably be the church. So, as I remember, I keep making reference to me. But this is the church. So, it's now, but there are churches that right from the beginning of the year, they defend them already. They don't come. Uh, so, if we are able to work with him and say, yes, um, I'm coming, but I have these suggestions. I think we can do this. So we say to me. And then we can turn on people and then help to see how we can uh, 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 get the education place going. Why we think that we should 
seeing promoting African values, African culture. But God has given it to us. Let's engage. Let's have a talk. Let's have a teaching session where we use the scriptures, where we use our tradition, where people get educated. And then the end result would be okay, in the service today, um, it's not going to be done by the children. We're going to sound, don't have a one, there's one to case in the ground. Somebody will uh, sound the drum and then somebody will read the text. Some practical things, believe that it's not going to be done. Did someone have a story? Yes. Tell yes. the story of John Chapter 1. Yes. <laughs> Somebody said, I will say. Yeah. You made it. Yes. 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 Oh, okay. Um, I think the issue of our traditions and cultures was the cake and you were all trying to be. In various areas. I think the issue of language has been amplified quite a bit. And certainly it's language is the career of culture. And, um, and, but there are other areas, other practices of the church that I personally can question now. For example, the ways in which people marry. Mm. You know, there's no Bible, biblical way of getting married. The way they Hey, that when Jesus went and turned water into wine. They are not told how it was. It was a Jewish marriage ceremony. Yeah. You know, somehow in our context, we, we think that a Christian marriage is a church wedding. It's a wedding where you dress in a certain way. And, and, and I guess it's, it's, it's become part, you know, so in that we get married twice. <laughs> For me, and I think, and, and I think what is more, uh, what makes gets me sometimes is this is a little bit of a If somebody hasn't had a church for it, they can't even be an elder or what is. And so the, there's a ridiculous situation where I know people when they've been married traditionally for over 20 something years. And because the man was going to become uh, uh, a country, they have to have a church wedding. That's ridiculous. You know, and they say that the traditional way that we as Africans get married is not acceptable before God. Is that what we are saying? And, and I, find, I think that those are such practices need to be addressed. Now. Why should we? And, and I think that I was telling you, who I said, the very first time Why can't the pastor, and most of the time, even now, with the traditional dating itself, 
These are four violations that arise in them. We have prayers, Christian prayers, and that's what's coming. But why is that not enough? That's, that's really my point. Interesting that that's the reason we had a student last year, I think, who was doing research. Uh, I think it's really difficult. Yeah, there was a number of research on this very issue because of the pastoral issues and problems it was raising because of that resistance. So people were like, when they think that they do it both because of money, they don't have enough money to do everything. So they went and wrote that and it was creating uh, pastoral issues in the company. And then, so he was trying to understand why we. Maybe people get married twice, and he was studying into the uh, uh, vows and all this said and all that. So it's interesting that you should raise that point. But coming back to something you said earlier, um, and uh, for what is what is well taken in terms of engaging the churches, I want to come back to something that uh, Dr. Singh said earlier about artists needing more theology. We are up here on the hill, physically speaking, and down the valley, on another hill. <laughs> um, but how, how do we help people who are active in the arts, who may be suspicious of Christian people like us, how do we help them? To begin to reach the gap from that side, so that that's you know maybe suspicion or influence can actually. Because I'm, I'm sure we have encountered it among maybe your students or colleagues, other places. How do we? So you can start, and then if you want to also chime in, maybe you'll have about twenty four days of action. I'm not sure. <laughs> Um, but I, think, I mean, suspicion is often dispelled by information. So if people don't know when they're in the gap up or something, they will be suspicious of it. You know, but when, when the truth is shown clear, then any journey that's specific knowledge would, would have a yeah, suspicion dispelled. Yes. Um, um, yeah. So, so the need again, I go back to education. I guess uh, um, drawing and meeting with people and helping to shed light on, on what uh, they, they are not clear about. I think that's just some extent. Yes. 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 I think I think a lot more to say on both there are colleagues who uh, I think there's an opinion and association so uh, the youth the best has those that be Theology, how do you that? That's, see, sometimes they convince, they convince themselves. I mean, they go to church, they know the scriptures. And so that's it. Yeah. I think the, the thing to do is to say, oh, you need a little more. Yeah. And maybe that's what the challenge is. So I'll, I'll just add it. Yeah. yeah. So um, there's a gospel music association, SEMA, Christian Music Association of Ghana, where different uh, Christian musicians, different uh, doing different things. Some are instrumentalists, some sing, some are gospel music directors. But it's, it's, most of the interaction is virtual, it's online. And so yes, that is one way that we can help them by communicating on their platforms and bringing such issues to them. We actually raised um, try to get a lot of them to participate in this as well. But yes, there's always that suspicion. Um, one remark is a, I'm not sure I really want to study it again. Uh, so, definitely the format has to be tweaked so that it's defined accessible and they can participate. And I think that will be uh, 
uh, useful. And one of the reasons I was trying to get us to do video recordings is that we can send snippets of these back to such platforms. And then they realize that, oh, Sana and you remember the metal kept feeling out of place, was like these colors, and I'm coming to sit among them. You know, but once we are able to show them that oh, it's not really that uh, academic as academic, then I think we can draw them in somehow. But I, again, I hear from your question the secular artists or that divide as well. I'm thinking the special of them also. I mean, you have people who are like, discussing all that arts are very spiritual. So a lot of very spiritual people in the arts yeah. uh, who are somehow sometimes they look sideways at the church. <laughs> Some of them have their experiences, right? Maybe they brought the church, they were very artistic, they were not offended with that, but they were offended with this dimension. And they and, and the arts world has a life of its own. So that, that's very good. Yeah, so let's just comment on that. So Doing arts together is one way to break that uh, tension because art is the common language we're speaking. And the drum beat or the it, it will get us, once we play together or we dance together, it, it gives us a neutral ground. Then we can have any other conversation that we want to have. So the approach has to be totally artistic to draw them in. And let's let's do this together. And so we use that approach sometimes when we're doing ethnobotology workshops. We go into a community and we just bring all artists together because there's a Bible translation and we wanted to get it to the community. If we leave it to the church people to compose the songs, they will replicate what Cristala and these people have left us with. But if we are able to get the indigenous who may not be Christian, we will have a, a lot more of their tradition coming in to the music that we want to see for the community. So we let them come together and then we do the art together, and that sort of breaks that uh, tension. So I think. How we the entire conversation forward. I think it's not But well, we don't want to drag our time, but I do want to have an opportunity to do one with here with us as a quick contribution or question. We want to hear from you also because. Uh, part of the CPAX uh, Center for Primal Conditions and Spirituality. And uh, we don't always be a talk show, but we want to uh, fund this, continue to develop. So if there are questions or contributions for those who are here, we have to look at the next sentence. Thank you very much. Uh, very happy to hear some of the ideas that were coming out. Um, and just my also maybe one or two things. So 
I feel like I'm modeling so important in the experience. Like when we saw the storytelling, I don't think there's not one person who's not impacted by the experience. So I feel like we have created a network of some sort that now we know. Like, sorry, I'm, I'm not been very informed, but now I know people. Right, so this is what you're doing. This is what you're doing. If we can also help promote, you know, some of the things that our colleagues are doing, and so when people see it, if they feel it, the dance, the storytelling, the drum of the arts, I think people will catch on. Um, so, and then there was another idea that I was thinking: if we can collect some of the stories. You know, the impact that some of these things have created in people's lives, just like a, a small movement or something. I think that can also help people to see that the power of arts, um, instead of just the surface as entertainment or something like that. Well, the surface is smaller than that. These cuts just to the Especially Yes, Okay, so um, I was part of the people who were selected to develop a new curve for KG GHS. SHS. You know, the new curriculum, uh, they now introduce creative arts and design. So, design stands on its own, and then still arts, performing arts, also part of the arts. And I see a similar thing uh, being discussed here. We have developed a curriculum, but there are no persons out there in the field to try and marry the two. So there are no teachers in the performing arts, so to speak. So the honors now lies on the sort of performing arts, we have a course where we have some kind of performing arts. And Institutions to, to train teachers so they can go out there and feel to train the upcoming ones. And I see a similar thing there, but the, the difficulty from my perspective will be when if you are hitting the brick wall of persons. In the gospel, who have had a mindset that is not ready to change, and how we can deal with that, and also how we can look at the up and coming ones. I heard Rere uh, talk about the Sunday school and all that, and I think that it should be another point of focus. For the institution, how we can train upcoming kids in that area. But first of all, how we can establish uh, some courses here that train people, uh, that train people so that they have a cycle of I see it as very important. So, the two things training here and then also trying to catch them when they are young so that they can have that. A new mindset that will lead and they will come out to, to perpetuate our course as we want it. Thank you very much. Yes, I have a 
and we do with artists and doing the virtual stuff. I, I think it will be a great idea. It will be a better idea, a stronger idea than making it institutionalized in a form of a formal education, because that will. Um, and yeah, so that's why they say that I don't want to do and things like that. But when it looks like that, then I will suggest the storytelling technique, which is confronting difficult issues through play. Because if it's going to be a difficult topic, then Let's talk about it without talking about it. It is preventive. When Jesus talks about the soul went out to sow, what he said about the soul was true. But what he actually wanted to say, he did not articulate. You infer it and then you accept it without it becoming a challenge. So I'm thinking, for example, if this institution comes to the School of Performing Arts and says, we would like to have a workshop with you to learn how to use your heart in propagating our program. You see, I mean, I don't think the School of Performing Arts is so you will go to a company. You will come here in the workshop. Then we begin to share and compare notes. So the institutes will draw on how to use the art, the artists will draw on theology for the betterment of all. And in the end, we will all be happy together. <laughs> 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 That's what I think. And that is one thing. Another thing is to engage with the, the, the pastoral community. What do you call it? Mm -hmm. The seminaries. Another thing is to engage with the seminaries because the seminaries will call me from time to time to come and train their students on public speaking. You see, because we recognize that a certain level of artistic knowledge about to speak to your congregation is important. So, if we are able to get them onto our side with this kind of person, and then we experience that in school, then half the problem is solved by the time they're getting to the field. So, when, by the time we're meeting them on the field, you know, the groundwork has been done. I'm concerned about this because I have noticed that slowly, steadily, and methodologically, clearly, calculatedly, our Mohammedan parents are making strides. In their bid to win followers, they are more calculated than the people who very subtle, but they're doing it and they're making strides. So let us do our bit to maintain what we have and also break new grounds. Amen. Is the uh, network that is developing. And one of the agents to start this, or have this, because I said start, to be very good to me. One of the primary reasons we uh, initiated this symposium was to bring artists and theologians into conversation. But I think these kinds of discussions and conversations. Uh, it's not a complete point, but for me, and I think for many of us, it's going okay to spark our thinking about what we can do in 
I'll give you asparagus. Because beyond what we can do institutionally, we need to do and seminars and suppose that there are the concrete things that we as uh, artists and researchers and teachers can do that now that we have made a conversation, but the Sarah knows me. I know her. I've met the Terry, he's met you know from my these conversations are now so that in itself creates space for further engagement. So that when the question comes, when the student arrives, or how it goes there, and they have questions about a certain dimension, <laughs> I can think, ah, I know somebody who can help them to understand this. And similarly, on the other side, students that come into those spaces, that come into the other halls, now they that never say, I know somebody who can help this. And carry forward. Um, I can't even end up with a real opportunity. I was invited, uh, Dr. Dubaji did a, I think it's a faculty of the Capital Center some weeks back. And uh, I think it was more or less the people in the department of the day. But I started in, I didn't see him, I was invited. But none of them, they didn't know me from anywhere. <laughs> but I listened to the presentation. And uh, at the end, you know, she's very professional, academic, all of those things, so very appreciative. And she did my little comments. And I could tell from some of the reactions of the people, they were intrigued. I didn't say anything big in a, in a coffee personality, it was not. But for some of them, it was like a bit of a, a light bulb. You know, that oh, hey, it's this thing he's talking about sounds of interest. So I think these kinds of discussions open the opportunity for that kind of engagement where we can be influencing um, the conversations in our very serious business. So, and then now, we'll let you make your comments. I don't know if uh, we have any that come up on mine. We don't know if it's not going to make it. We don't know if it's not to come up with a program that is uh, a pilot program. Um, pilot in the sense that we will choose one uh, section of the society and provide a training with the experts that are around. We saw yesterday with the singer we saw today with uh, how people demonstrated about where they do it so that that pilot program we will take out will, will serve as a model for others who want to come and emulate, but taking into consideration their own, their, their own cultural framework. In other words, language, theology, and movement, and what that means, and whatever, can be part of it. Because you look at see what we see in churches today is very rote. It's wrote in the sense that you just beat it anyhow and you go the way that you want. But at least, even if you want to maintain that, it means that that cultural framework, there must be something that is injected in it, that when you come, you can say, oh, this is it, before you go on for that thing, and everybody else does. Pilot program is what I am advocating. Thank you very much. So I'll turn back to our panelists as we wrap up. Just in future, we'll have to make this work for the next day in the session. So it's time to go to the next session. I think we'll start with the next session. And then we'll do this way. Online, we'll be able to do it. This is what we're going to do. So, um, thank you very much. I think we've been able to we have started 
in a very great way. And we have a great opportunity to make an impact in our nation, especially because there is no, as far as I'm aware, there is no uh, theological program in Ghana that looks at the arts uh, the way we have done. So I think that pioneering something like that is key for this nation. And of course, oh, Akrofi does not serve only Ghana. So it's, a, it's, a, it's a, something we're contributing to world Christianity. So I think that that is key. And I'm just reminded of a comment uh, Uncle Terry made about not being in active uh, ministry or active dance, but doing more research. And I remember that in our profit, we understand research as service to God. And I know, I know that if he hadn't done that research, we wouldn't understand that they are, the popular music is based on the tradition. And, and that's a contribution he's making. And so once we do programs like these, which seems removed from the active uh, grassroots, it's still a contribution in terms of service, but it's actually ministry that we are doing. And so we shouldn't be too quick to discard that. And I think that that's one thing I want to just say about that. Oh, yes. Uh, <clears throat> now it's a terrible story about the link between theology and the arts. <clears throat> Here was I that day. Uh, it was an oral examination. It was uh, Abraham's you know, examination. And so I was very busy. And so after I finished, I went to the office. There were some ladies waiting for me. And they were told that I was. So when they came, they were asking me, so what do you do? You know, you asked to come and see me about the programs and all that. I said, well, just to start with. It was very busy examining. The students who did his thesis on Holy Shoei. Then I told them, and so over here, everything is possible. <laughs> We know I mean, it represents the, like African arts, and uh, if it is possible for us to have gotten the students who really work for me, then it is possible to achieve this. And now we also uh, we could be getting some of our students to work on their annual projects, but I would, I would want to see someone working on this as a unit. And some of these uh, people have been with us over the years, and uh, they're not telling the stories. So the way they think theology or Christian expression with the culture needs to be told. So, well, uh, Dr. 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 Seth, that would be you know, you know, better you can get students to be And some others who um, we, we, we can begin to flag what they do. And then that can also become resources that we use when we meet among the horses. So this is what I just want to say. Thank you very much. It's to have an ask. Well, I've been reflecting on what I'm going to share this morning and bring our attention to those who are willing. Uh, and I think it's important. Um, and as we're talking about lunch, artists are restless. And so, maybe what God needs us to be is willing for him to work through us uh, as theologians, as artists, whatever it is. And whatever he has given us, how willing are we to use it to make sure? So, that's what I've been reflecting on willing restless. Uh, how am I going to use? Well, so 
What did God say that they asked for? What do you want? Yeah, as well. So, um, the word uh, as bad about God, the past that you're willing to be fine wherever we are, what God gives me as gifts, and see those gifts as precious, and not allowing anybody to make us feel that they are not. Thank you very much. Let's have four hands. Enjoy the program to close. We are supposed to have the last announcement there. I that he was able to join us in this program with some closing reflections. And that um, we are going to follow the next one, experience and support, and uh, make these comments for our way our thanks to the right director. Um, some years back, when my wife and I first came to Ghana, our late uh, chancellor, um, Prof. Peter, was here in the program. I had a chance to meet him. He had been a supervisor for her supervisor's dissertation. And uh, my wife was very excited to meet her so academic grandfather. He at that time was. And I know he had done it many times, but encouraging the institutes in areas of ethnomusicology and developing further into the arts was a deep passion of his. Arts and culture and the gospel of Jesus Christ. And I would like to believe that what we have done in this program really is an honor to the legacy that was left to us by. Uh, our nation's side, uh, and also our founding director, the Reverend Professor Kambe Yako, who endeavored to bring these elements of faith and culture and mission together in a creative way. So, though we are not going to pour any addition and thank for the ancestors, we will extend our thanks to God for such ideas, the legacy that they have left us. In this institution. And uh, my prayer is that we can continue to carry, carry that forward. And now, before that, I would like to, I would have asked the deputy director to do this, but I didn't give her a heads up, so I won't do this. So I would, have, on her behalf, uh, the deputy director, who is the director of the Center for Humanity and Christian Spirituality, Professor J. Henry Medalco. And I want to extend our thanks to all of our presenters who have been with us throughout the program. That's teachers Chetty, Dr. Sarah Dewati and her team, Reverend Mary, Dr. Kimberly Settles, Dr. Abraham, Dr. Bill White, Dr. Dr. Lee Bobby Andrews, Mr. Sarah Sarah Pastor Neil Kai, Mr. Terry Bright, Mr. Susu. Mr. Jim Bessel, Mr. William Ajaki. We want to say, oh, <laughs> Dr. Awasi, we want to say a very big heartfelt thank you. Let's come for that. We want to also thank um, the Institute itself from the registry to all the support staff, the hospitality team, they've all done a wonderful, wonderful job in hosting this program. They are very grateful. We put a lot of pressure on you at the last minute. We have come to for us. So thank you very much to all of Let's start with them. Thank you.
to look fresh and eat it out. So we are very grateful for all that you have done throughout this program. And who else would like to do something? I should have looked at this now. I think that's everybody I need to say. Oh, yes, I forgot. I want to thank the planning committee. Uh, with this whole idea of school thinking, in fact, I, I think it was, I'm not sure who it was, but when I gave my lecture last year and I had an offhand comment, and then I was very like, we need to follow up this idea. You know, I was very as a way of very gently, <laughs> but persistently and firmly pushing you to do this. Follow up this idea, you need to follow up this idea. And I would kind of, I wasn't really taking it too seriously to be honest. And she said, oh, you know, and she, she has a way of getting you to do things, and I would be going, that's what she would do. And said, oh, why don't you just talk to Professor Lyon? The whole committee that was working to put this uh, program together. Uh, the comments that this, the fact that we all the to do this. Thank you very much. God bless you. And uh, thank all of you who are listening online, who will watch later on the live stream. We have promoted this on their social media who have joined us struggling at times with the Zoom connection. Thank you. And our prayer is that we will carry this forward. Ourselves. 
And therefore, it's important that as people made in the image of God, we recognize the unique things that are given to us. And where we feel tempted to take that which belongs to another, we will see that as actually the very main God, who in his wisdom has given us all these things. To think that we will learn to appreciate all the blessings he has given to us in the various things that we have in mind. So we have come to recognize the major responsibilities involved in moving forward and the marriage between theology and the arts. I pray that we will be alive to the responsibilities of the world and that the world's grace will actually make progress, perceiving some of the concrete ideas that have been offered in perceiving from this marriage. We began with prayer yesterday, we ended with prayer. We began the prayer today, we are ending the prayer. In the presentations, I didn't hear anybody acknowledge the importance of prayer in creating the artistic uh, things that we bring to be. But the things here and there, the idea of God's inspiration. The idea that I won't move till I hear from God that this is what He wants me to do. So we do have the sense that yes, even as we create and even as we perceive this marriage between theology and the arts, we can never forget the Creator who has given us all these things. And I hope and pray that we will back our efforts with prayer and God in His mercy will hear us. And if I have to put forth his own glory for the extension of his kingdom in my land to be used. That goes to me, please rise and listen to prayer. We are looking for the gifts of yesterday and today. They have been faithful in accompanying us these two days. Thank you for all the insights here. Thank you for the privileges in which you have blessed us. Thank you even for the sense of responsibility moving forward that you have given to us. Without you, we cannot accomplish anything. So, as a part of me, we pray that your presence will go with us. That we appreciate even more the gifts you have given to us. And our responsibility in preserving them and using them in your service. So strengthen us, Lord Father. Help us through the inspiration of your Holy Spirit to measure our needs and to use them to one another. And Thank you.